Hey guys, what's going on? It's JLo with Tandem, and we're back a year later with the production rear bumper. So in this video, we're gonna give an overview about the production bumper and go over the changes, and we're gonna go inside and look at the CAD to show you what changed behind what you can see here. All right, so the swing arm is the absolute biggest change. We're gonna walk you through from the pin to the outside here. So starting at the bumper, this, this pin rides on uh, a bigger set of bearings and it's taller by an inch, which makes the overall swing out arm taller by an inch, which of course makes it more rigid. With the design of the arm itself, for Jambo, we, we were in a hurry, so we just threw it together with square tubing, but this is actually fabricated sheet metal, which makes it lighter and it's just as stiff. So we began with a much bigger uh, stainless striker plate for this bigger pin. We found out that the pins we were using out here just weren't enough when you would let the whole arm slide and the pin would just slam in. With this much mass, it was damaging the pins. So now we have a much bigger stainless striker plate. And then we have a set of holes through all the bulkheads that we have rubber grommets for and they are spec for these grommets so they fit beautifully. And this is to run all your electricity through. So anything you want to put on your arm, you can route through here and there's another one in here, all the way through the arm, another one up here and you can actually get inside this frame here. So any lights you want to run, you know, uh, whips or lights or accessories, you could even put USB plugs back here. Everything's routed inside the arm so it stays nice and clean. Then of course, we have the much bigger pin with the striker plate. And the pin is really sweet because it actually rides on a ramp and you can just push it and it, it picks up and it unengages and automatically re-engages. So you can push it or pull it or lift it up. Either one, it doesn't matter. Moving over this way, because the arm got bigger, we're able to put a little door in here. And this door I think has some baby wipes in it. And the, 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 the I guess your space goes from about right here to about here and you can reach all the way in over here and you can reach in over here and put whatever you need to in there. And we thought, well, well it's gonna get dirty and it might get water. So there's actually weep holes in the bottom to let any moisture drain out. Close that guy back up. And I'm moving up to the frame structure. This again is all fabricated sheet metal and it has this grid all the way around. Inside of here, inside of here, on every face there's this grid structure so you can implement and put whatever accessories you want. You could see we made this really quick and easy little mount for my flags because we like to run a, run a couple flags on the back. We also changed the tire carrier mount from last year. It's the, essentially the same thing. It just fits a little bit nicer and gives you more clearance on the arm. Moving out here towards the end, this stuff is pretty much the same. It all functions the same, it ends up the same. We're using the same latch. Um, these ones are stainless though, whereas last year's weren't stainless with the same 3D printed part that's a little easier on your arm. It's a, and it gives you a little bit more leverage to really cinch it down. All right, so as far as the bumper body goes, visually it's pretty much the same thing. We did change this corner a little bit to facilitate the bigger strike plate and the bigger pin but it all looks the same, it all functions the same. We still retain the park distance control sensors as well as the light force ultra flood backup lights. Everything here is the same. It essentially looks the same. We just changed it a little bit for the pins. So this mount is essentially the same thing. Still wraps around the frame just as before. We did make this gusset a little bigger, which we'll talk about that more in detail later with the CAD. All right. So with the new pin and the new arm design, we actually, we actually gained something that uh, is pretty cool. So with where we have the spare tire and all the accessory, accessories currently located, we can actually open these further. So just like before, push the pin in, let it go. It'll swing out real far. It'll lock into a second location. This gives you a lot of working area back here. So you, know, you could open both of them up. It's close, but it will clear here. And now you have all this extra room for We'll show you in a little bit when you have your tables down for cooking or whatever you need. You have your hatch up. You'll have all this open area to work in. All right, so we're gonna move into some of the accessories now. I know throughout this video you've been seeing this and those who didn't see it at Jambo wanna know. So this is a table that we've developed and we really put some uh, strict guidelines on ourselves for our tables. So you can run it in this operation 
or you can pull all this out and then it's self-supporting no wires no anything and it is a strong table you can see the whole truck is bouncing around now we have one on both sides personally we use them for food prep and that side runs a runs a grill but you can use it for anything you need you know laptop and a coffee a little kid diaper change station whatever you need you're not limited to any cable you're not limited to anything and it's all stainless right now we don't have time to go through all of this but that we are doing a dedicated video on this and uh, we can go through all the CAD if ever, anybody wants to see it. We're happy to show you how we developed it and why we did what we did. But right now and all the testing we've done, they work amazing. And we, we've had 50 pounds of weight just on this, actually this leaf right here. We put a 50 pound battery on this outside corner. Nothing buckled, nothing gave. There's, in our opinion, nothing like this. Uh, and they are modular, you know, they, they bolt into our grid pattern. You can move them anywhere. You can put them on whatever you want. They don't have to go on our bumpers, but we'll go more in depth on these later. That's so cool. All right, so moving on to our accessories. The way we currently have it outfitted is an air hydraulic jack, a little fire extinguisher, a 10 pound propane tank, obviously our propane tank mount, four easy access recovery boards, which we'll go over in a second, then two five pound jerry cans. All right, so something that was real important to us was to fit everything on here with good access to our recovery boards and not have to pull jerry cans or propane tanks out. So we developed this cool little system. You loosen these two big thumb screws, you can literally slide the whole unit off the back. <clears throat> now, when you have everything here, you pull these thumb screws out and this panel pivots out of the way. There's a long piano hinge here. This whole panel pivots out. You pull out what you need, one, two, three, or all four. You can, you can close all the way back down to one in here. You use what you need, self-recover, bolt it all back on here, close it all up, cinch these little guys down, and then we slide it right back on. Now this is stainless hardware. Nothing's gonna rust on you. Cinch these thumb screws back down, and it's good and safe again. So the only thing here that's still in its prototype phase is this guy. So obviously we don't want to have our ARB jack out in the open like this. There's actually a box that it slips into and hinges the door closed and that door actually locks it in and you can lock the box. It keeps it out of the weather, out of the sun and out of any thief's hands. All right, so this is the exterior overview. Now we're gonna move over to the computer and we'll show you all the behind the scenes CAD stuff. Okay, so here we are in SolidWorks looking at the file. Here's the whole rear bumper with the accessories installed. We're gonna work through and show you some of the changes we made in here. Um, so we'll start here on this outside edge. These gussets right here, we noticed we were able to make them a little deeper. So they're slightly bigger from here to here and they're a lot bigger from here to here, which is just gonna help with any side loading or impacts on this outside face. In fact, when we had first installed this version on the Sequoia, we put a jack underneath this corner of the bumper right here and we were able to actually lift the truck up. It did deflect a little bit, of course, but uh, it wasn't that bad. So something else we did was we added this horizontal gusset and this gusset here. We noticed on the or original one, we, um, we, we were doing some testing and hitting the bumper down here. We were dropping the truck on a ledge while we were wheeling without this front mount, actually doing some real testing with it, and we saw a little more deflection than we wanted. So we added some more gussets in here. It's kind of hard to see. I'll try to get in there and show it to you. Um, but here's the pin. This is the pin for the bearing and the latch, or the swing out, sorry. It's uh, right here. It actually goes through this layer, this layer, and this layer of the bumper. It's welded on the top and bottom of this, the top and bottom of this, and the actual, the bottom face of this, this panel of the bumper. You can see it's protruding through here. It's welded all the way around. Then we clean this corner up a little bit. Something else we did was change the location of this, just to give a little bit more clearance to the door whenever you're off-roading and everything's flexing. A lot of people have asked about how it's mounted to the chassis. This is the main mount right here. The frame rail actually goes 
right through this hole right in here and then you apply we kind of call it the squeezer because we're not too good at naming things you drop this guy in and then you see this gap here and here these gaps are intentional so that whenever you tighten them down this actually conforms around the frame rail and there's a set of shims that go here and here you can actually see the shims the shims are installed in this CAD. Here's a shim right here. And then here's the other shim. And those shims are varying thicknesses because we, we notice that even though everybody's sequoia is the same, they all are a little bit different. So once you get this guy put in, you slide these shims in, hammer them into place, and you tighten these guys down. This here is the forward mount. And same situation, you see there's gaps here. And those gaps are there, so whenever you tighten down these bolts here, there's one here and one here, and then one here and one here, it really squeezes down on the frame. Now these four, you can't see it in this, in the CAD, I don't think. These four here, two of them are gonna be drilled for you. They're laser cut, but two of them are not. The reason we did that, kind of the same thing as before, um, you know, we have to have slots, so these, this bolt here and this bolt here are laser cut, but these two are not. And the reason for that is you, you have some slop in these to line this up with this part when you're setting the height of the bumper. And once you get these ones, these outer two tight, you actually drill these yourself to make sure that there's no slop. So this cannot slide on this face here. Same with this here. So once you get the bumper pulled into the frame rail and you tighten these down, we actually include a long drill bit. And what you do with that drill bit, let me try to rotate this guy here, um, is you actually drill it. Okay, SolidWorks is freaking out. You actually drill a hole through this plate, through this plate, through that plate, and then through that plate. And there's a special set of bolts that we send that are very high shear loaded bolts. And you can see there's a slot here. Well, when you get these holes drilled and you install these two shear bolts, you literally cannot pull this bumper off. It would never happen. You'd never, ever, ever have to worry about pulling the bolt off. Now, if you just leave it with these guys without the shear bolts, you can see there's a slot here. And that slop is everybody's frames are different. So you got to shim it where you want it. And then once you're finally installed, you drill the shear bolts. And then here's the other mount. This goes up into some pre-drilled holes in the bottom of the frame. Those are big old bolts. They're M12s, I believe. And then there's a 14 millimeter bolt that goes all the way through here. From the bottom of the bumper, through the frame rail, through the top of the bumper, and you get there's a big old nut that goes up here. All those combine to a, a super solid super installed bumper it's not going to move it's not going to budge and then here's the recovery point you can see the whole outline of it there it's actually welded completely to the face of this main mount and we bevel this 45 degrees and we weld multiple passes all the way around on the inside and then multiple passes on the outside of the bumper here so we do um, i think three passes on it to make sure that it's not going anywhere and then I believe that is actually all of the changes that we made for the uh, production one. Here's the latch, where the latches go. These don't actually stick through. It's just in CAD. You see the doors. Oh, okay, here's one other thing. This right here is a skid plate. And only, I mean, only the platinum guys are going to need it because your airbag compressor sits here. So this is just to protect the airbag compressor. But I'll just kind of pan around, show you the inside of the bumper a little bit. You can see all the gusseting in here. There's a gusset down there, gusset here, gusset here, here's the pin for the swing out. All of these joints are fully welded all the way through, air everywhere is fully welded. Here's a little gusset. This is where the light, the light mounts through. This right here is clearance for the light. 
you actually have room to run the wiring harness for your lights and your sensors right here on the top. We made a little cut out there to run whatever harnesses you need to run. Here's the inside of the park distance control sensor holes. Move on onto this side. This is the passenger side. You see the clearance for the light. All of these fasteners are spec by us. They're all grade 12 or grade 14. This is the mount for the PDC sensor. That's it. That's the inside of the bumper. All developed here from a 3D file or 3D 3D scanned image of the black sequoia, then we developed all of it right here in SolidWorks and prototyped and tested it all the way to what you see now. See these little are these are alignment holes for us for whenever we're assembling and jigging it. You can see all the individual panels here. All of these joints are fully welded inside and outside. All the way around, everything in here is fully welded. It all just looks seamless. It's just a bunch of finished work that Aldrin does just to make it look nice. Here's the stainless striker plate, which gets countersunk on all four of these fasteners so it can't move. But yeah, that's, that's the inside. Some people have expressed interest on it. They wanted to see what the innards look like. But I think that's it. I mean, you can see what it, what it started as and what it's become now pretty much a copy of it. Just the pin. I think that's it guys. Thanks for checking everything out. A bunch of folks have purchased this bumper so we're uh, we're about to get all the new laser cut files in. We'll probably start manufacturing the initial run uh, next week or two Mondays from now. All these accessories are available separate, but it does come with the tire carrier. So one tire carrier comes with each bumper, the tables and all the accessories that we talked about outside. These are all going to be separate. Like and subscribe, but also Thanks for uh, being interested.